Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi and welcome back uh, to another video of mathematics for matriculation first semester so we already finished discuss about uh, real number system in this chapter and also we already finished discussing the indices set and logarithms so now we are going to to go into the last part of this chapter that is complex numbers so in this video I will introduce to you uh, what is complex numbers and its properties alright so I think you when you when we when we talk about real number one of the property of uh, a real number is that the square of sorry sorry uh, the square of any real number is positive right so the square okay so we call back sorry we call uh, one of the property is square of any real number is positive is positive okay so for example we take for example we take for example is uh, the square of any real number is positive so take for example 2 squared equals to 4 okay negative 3 cube and oh sorry we are talking about square mm. is 9 ok and then we have 1 over 4 squared is 1 over 16 and so on and actually uh, if we go because it involves squares ok so this ok so we talk about this one so these numbers is actually if we going back to uh, quadratic equation actually this this value satisfy the equation x squared minus 4 equals to 0 ok so if if we have this uh, this equation x squared minus x squared minus 4 equals to 0 so the solution is x can be either positive or negative ok because this 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 solution if you put into the equation it will, will give you 0 ok right so in this case ok in this case ok we talk about one kind of one kind of equation that makes uh, mathematicians dumbfounded for a while during I think about uh, 16th century I think if I'm not mistaken okay so how about this equation x squared plus 1 equal to 0 what is the solution x squared minus 1 equals to 0 ok so one way to solve ok so if we're going to solve this equation by what we already we, we know so we move 1 to the right so we have x squared equals to 1 ok so in order to in order to remove this the, the squared here we put third on both sides so now we have x equals to square root of negative 1 square root of negative 1 ok the problem is ok the problem is the problem is if we're going ok because we're going to this one right ok the problem is there is no real uh, sorry there is no solution in real number 
there is no solution in real number that can satisfy this equation okay there is no real number such that when you square the number it will give you negative one no there's no such any number that when you square it it will give you negative number no because we said that square of any real number is positive okay but now if we're going to solve we can see that here here we need to find a number in real number we call x such that we, if when we we put square on the solid on the number it will give you negative one no there is no no solution from real number that can satisfy the equation okay all right so what we do, what what the mathematicians what the mathematicians do is they introduce a number that is called imaginary number Ima imaginary number so imaginary number e sorry imaginary sorry Imaginary number is is a number that can satisfy this equation. Okay, in other words, a uh, sorry a number that was introduced. to satisfy or to solve we can satisfy means to solve okay to sorry that can satisfy that can satisfy uh, x squared plus 1 equals to 0 Okay, so we're going back to here. We have x squared, right? So, x squared, right? So, from here, from here, we said that x equals to negative 1. Okay, but we said just now, there is no solution x from real number that can satisfy this equation. Because there is no real number when you square it gives you negative number okay so what the mathematicians do is okay sorry so let's say square root of 1 is i so let's say square root of 1 is i so now so now okay so now the problem can be resolved because if you square the i it will give you sorry it's supposed to be negative 1 negative 1 ok so now we have a solution we have a solution that satisfy this equation ok but now but now but now this i ok but now remember i is not sorry a real number i is not a real number ok so now, when we say that we when we when we assume that the square root of negative one is i, okay. Now we can satisfy the equation. However, i is not a real solution. Okay, no, sorry, i is not a real number. So imaginary number is not a real number. It exists in other realms of numbers. That is what we call as complex numbers. Okay. So now we go into the definition of complex numbers okay so now so now when they introduce the i they discovered the realm of 
complex number system complex number system complex number complex number system if if we have double r for real number so now we have double c for complex numbers system of complex numbers okay okay so now we define a real number eh, sorry we define complex number s okay so we have complex number is a number we call it z or z equals to a plus b i z equals to a plus b i okay so now we have a and b are real numbers while i equals to square root of negative 1 okay so this is how we define a complex number a complex number z or z okay z okay so in this complex number z in this complex number z okay a is refers is uh, a refers to real part of z or we can say that uh, real part of z is a right while b is imagi Imaginary, not number, imaginary part of Z. Why B is imaginary part of Z? Because B is multiplied to I. Okay, while A is not multi, is not being multiplied to, to I. So that's why we said that A is real part of Z and B is the imaginary part of Z. Okay, so real part, we write it re, re of Z equals to A. So for imaginary, number, for imaginary part, we, we write it in simpler way as I am of Z equals to B okay right so this is a def this is the definition of complex number a complex number alright so we always use Z, Z to ref refer to complex numbers okay alright so we have example okay so let's say let's take some example example Okay. Simplify. Simplify. Uh, in. In the. In the standard form. In the standard form. Z equals to a plus b i so we call this form this we call this this form as standard form of complex number so this a standard this is the standard form of complex number because we have uh, polar representation of uh, polar representation polar form of complex numbers okay so we, we are we are going we are, i'm not going to cover that in this video don't worry so now just be familiar with the standard form of complex number okay so simplify in the following as uh, simplify the following uh, in the form of in the standard form a plus b i okay so we have first example a we have a okay a is square root of negative 25 okay now to simplify negative 25 we can separate we can we can write we can read we can write it as product of as a product of two numbers that is the simplest one is uh, product of negative 1 multiply 25 okay so now we can separate the according because according to the to the indices to, sorry so, so according to the uh, if you remember the set Rule, the rule are the law of set that we have discussed before we can separate 
uh, into into two set into set into two set into in, sorry into two sets. So we have square root of one multiply square root of twenty five. Okay. Now we can we can write square root of negative twenty five into the standard form. Okay. So now we have negative one is i. Okay. So now negative one is i. And square root of 35 is 5. Because 5 squared is gives you 35. So you have 5 multiply i. 5 multiply i. This is this is considered standard form because if you see here, actually there is a. There is a. But now because our a is 0. So this is our a. This is our B. Okay. So if you have A equal to 0, so we don't need to write the 0. Uh, we, don't, we don't need to write the real form, uh, the real part. Just enough for us to write the remaining part. Because our real part now is 0. Okay. Alright. So that is for the first example. Second example is we have B 3. Oh, sorry. 3 plus negative 7. <coughs> D plus negative 7. Okay. So, we write it negative 7, square root of negative 7. As we have done it before, separate into, uh, we, we write negative 7 as, product, as a product of two numbers. Okay, so we, so we have 3 plus Square root of negative 1 multiply 7. Okay. And then, we have 3 plus the square root of 1 multiply square root of 7. Okay, so now we don't have any, now any, any because 7 is not a perfect number of Sorry, because 7 is not perfect number of 2, perfect power of 2, sorry, perfect power of 2. So, we just let uh, square root of 7 as it is. But now, we can change negative, square root of negative 1 to i. So, our final answer is 3 plus, sorry, square root of 7 multiply i. Okay. Alright. Okay, I think two example is enough for you. Okay. So, because we are dealing with complex number that involves imaginary number. <laughs> okay, so we need to know what is the properties of I. Okay, so we need to know what is the properties of I. Properties of I. Properties of I. Okay, property so far is I, I only have one property. It is enough. Okay, it's because we start with because we have because we know that I is equals to equals to negative one uh, square root of negative one. Therefore, I squared is negative one. I squared is negative one. Okay. Okay. Uh, this property is simple, okay, but it's not as, as simple as uh, as you expected it. Okay, so I show you another. Uh, I show you one example. So let's say we have an example. Simplify. A. A i of 10 i to the power of 10 <laughs> i to the power of 10 okay okay so according to according to the properties uh, according to the property of i we have i squared equals to negative 1 okay so now we can see that 10 uh, is a product of 5 multiplied 2 5 times 2 so we can rewrite i guess i squared Multiply 5. Okay, so remember that 
uh, we we already learn the laws of the laws of indices. Okay, so you know that you know you know you know now, right? Right? Why I choose to uh, discuss with you indices set and logarithm uh, rather than I discuss to you complex num complex numbers first. Okay, because it will make you easier to understand this this uh, this this example. Okay. So now we can we can set we, okay we can rewrite it this one as in bracket i squared close bracket to the power of five okay to the power of five so now we have so now we have negative one to the power of five which is negative one okay. Alright. Second example. B. I to the power of, sorry, 25. I to the power of 25. Okay. So now our power, our index is uh, an odd number. Rather than, because we see in the previous example, our, our index is even number. So even number, the factor of an even number must always include 2. Okay, but now we have uh, our, our, our index is odd number. Okay, but okay, odd number, still odd number is is defined as uh, at the simplest one, odd number, the smallest, the smallest even number plus one. Smallest even number plus one. So we can write 25 as I 24 plus one. Okay, so according to the laws of indices, we can separate the power into two separate indices. So we have i uh, to the power of 34 multiply i to the power of 1. So i to the power of 1 is just i. Okay, so now what, I need, what we need to evaluate is i to the power of 34. Again, 24 is now even number. So 24 is in the simplest way is a product of 2 times 12 so we can rewrite it as eh, sorry i squared multiply 12 multiply, eh, no, to the power of 12 times i squared eh, sorry, times i so so now we have uh, square root of 1 <coughs> no negative or negative 1 to the power of 2, 12, 20, uh, 12, multiply i. So our power is even number. So we have 1 multiply i. So i. 1. 1 multiply i. So no need to write 1. Just, we, get, we just write i. Okay. Right. So I think these two examples is enough for you is enough for you okay so you can conclude that so now from here from the properties from, from this example we can conclude that we can conclude that okay so if we have if we have i of m oh sorry i of m okay if m is 2n Okay, if m is 2n, okay, I'm uh, sorry, I think I prefer to use, I, I just conclude that this, okay. Okay, so, i to the power of 2 multiply n. Okay, if n is even, if n is even, we have, okay, i to n is equals to 1. But, if n is odd, we have i to n is negative 1. Okay. So this is what we can conclude from the two examples that I have demonstrated to you. Okay. Alright. So this is the properties of i. Alright. We go into another 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 concept of 
it related to complex numbers that is conjugate of a complex number conjugate of z or a conjugate of z okay conjugate of z conjugate of complex sorry complex number okay remember that we define z equals to a plus bi okay sorry i think i prefer to i should start with if okay if z equals to a plus bi is a complex number then sorry then it's conjugate is the conjugate of z is z bar equals to a minus bi so i think you already familiar with the 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 concept of conjugate because we already seen in video related to set about rationalizing the denominator so i think the conjugate of complex number is not an is not a big deal for you it's just similar to what i have shown to you about uh, conjugate of a set okay conjugate of a set okay so example okay so so this set and this set are, are, are related to each other okay so the conjugate for z for for z bar is z a plus bi okay so we have that conjugate for a by a minus bi is a plus bi it just you know each now each z and bar z is conjugate of each other okay z bar and z is conjugate they are conjugates of each other okay the similar concept to to the, to the conjugates of z no worry it's just similar okay so so example of conjugate is let's say we have let's say we have uh, z is 5 plus 7i then our conjugate is 5 minus 7i in easy okay how about if z is 2 minus 3i so as i said before z bar and z and z bar and z are complete are, are, are conjugates of each other so for this one it's just z bar is 2 plus 3i okay third example if we have z equals to 6i its conjugate is z z bar is negative 6i okay because the real part of z now is zero so we no need to write the the real part okay but we know we only need to change the sign of the imaginary part okay how about if we have z equals to 8 well its conjugate is still 8 okay so this uh, a few illustrations about uh, conjugates of a complex number okay so we have the properties of conjugates okay, the properties of conjugate properties properties of conjugates okay properties of conjugates 
So we have the first one is addition, addition, addition of z. Okay, z uh, a complex number z n. And it's conjugate that is z bar. Okay, so now we have z is a. Sorry. So we have a plus b i uh, plus the conjugate. It's conjugate that is a minus b i. So now if we expand the bracket, so positive bi cancel cancels out negative bi so what's left is a plus a so a plus a is 2a okay second example a second property is product of product of product of a complex number z and its conjugate z bar Okay, so we have a plus bi multiply a minus bi. Okay, if you if you if you expand the bracket, okay, if you expand the bracket, ah, uh, if you expand the bracket, I can I can show you how to ex. Okay, I can show you, but I I think it's a better left for you to to do it as an exercise. Okay, but what you will have is a squared plus b squared. A squared plus b squared. Okay. A squared plus b squared. Okay. So now, we can see that uh, addition of a complex number and its conjugate gives you real number. 2a is real number. It's no more a complex number. The same goes to product of a complex number with conjugates. a squared plus b squared is a real number. The, the product of, of a complex number and its conjugates gives you a real number. There is no more complex number. That is the, that is the unique property, that is the unique, unique properties of conjugates related to addition and product of conjugates a complex co complex number and its conjugates okay so example example so example okay simplify 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 a we have negative 2 plus 5i plus negative 2 minus 5i. So now we have we have uh, addition of a complex number with its conjugates. So according to this property, we can write it as 2 of a. Our a now is negative 2. So, 2 multiplied negative 2 gives you 4. Okay. So, because this is our a and this is our b. Okay. Second example. B. We have negative 3 minus 4i multiply negative 3 plus 4i so both of the brackets have same this have the same real parts and imaginary parts but one is a conjugate of another okay so because it is a product of a complex number with the conjugate it's conjugate so our a is negative 3 our b is negative sorry our b is 4 our b is 4 Okay, our B is 4. Our B is 4. Okay. So, we have 
negative 3 squared plus 4 squared. So we have negative 3 squared gives you 9. 4, 4, 4 squared gives you 26. So 9, 9 plus 26 is 25. Okay. So that's all for the introduction of uh, complex numbers. So I hope you really understand the basic concepts of a complex number. Okay, because if you don't if you don't understand, then uh, you will have you will face difficulties for the next part of it. Because this is not this is not this is only the first part of of the subtopic. Okay, this is only the the first part of subtopic. So make sure that you really understand what is complex numbers, what is the properties of i, and, and what is the conjugate, and the properties of conjugates. Okay, so if you have any question, or if you have any comment, please uh, leave it in the comment section. Uh, if, you have, uh, if you have question, I will try to answer it as soon as possible. If you have any comment, I will try to reply it also as soon as possible. Okay, I actually I noticed the uh, comments on my of, on the old videos of uh, matriculation mathematics that I uh, I haven't replied yet. So, inshallah, I will try to answer it after this. Okay, I'm sorry for the late reply. I'm really sorry for the late reply. Okay, so see you again on the next part of. This subtopic, inshallah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And see you.